What's up, y'all? Another Sabbath day Torah reading. Genesis 37. Now there's a typology in here with Joseph representing Jesus. You'll see what I'm talking about here in a minute. Now Jacob lived in the land where his father had sojourned, in the land of Canaan. These are the records of the generations of Jacob. Joseph, when 17 years of age, was pasturing the flock with his brothers while he was still a youth. It's like Jesus, when he was young, was in the temple learning and teaching. Along with the sons of Billah and the sons of Zilpah, his father's wives. And Joseph brought back a bad report about them to their father. It's like Jesus likely did the same thing. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his sons because he was the son of his old age. Just like the father loves Jesus more than anybody. And he made him a very colored tunic. His brothers saw that their father loved him more than all his brothers. So they hated him and could not speak to him on friendly terms. And Joseph had a dream. And when he told it to his brothers, they hated him even more. He said to them, Please listen to this dream which I have had. For behold, we were binding sheaves in the field. Sheaves are bundles of uh, grain stalks. So they're tying up bundles of grain stalks. And lo, my sheaf rose up and also stood erect. And behold, your sheaves gathered around and bowed down to my sheaf. Then his brothers said to him, Are you actually going to reign over us? Or are you really going to rule over us? So they hated him even more for his dreams and for his words. Just like the Pharisees and a lot of the Jews hated Jesus because of the things he said. Because he said he was the son of God and that he was going to reign over them. And they hated him. Now he, he had still another dream and related it to his brothers and said, Lo, I have had still another dream and behold, the sun and the moon and eleven stars were bowing down to me. The sun and the moon represented his father and mother. The eleven stars represented his eleven brothers. He related it to his father and to his brothers, and his father rebuked him and said to him, What is this dream that you have had? Shall I and your mother and your brothers actually come to bow down ourselves before you to the ground? His brothers were jealous of him, but his father kept this saying in mind. Then his brothers went to pasture their father's flock in Shechem, It's like the Pharisees were watching over the flock, the rest of the Jews in Jerusalem. Israel said to Joseph, Are not your brothers pasturing the flock in Shechem? Come and I will send you to them. And he said to him, I will go. Just like the Father sent Jesus into this world to Jerusalem. To be among his brothers, the Jews. Then he said to him, Go and see about the welfare of your brothers and the welfare of the flock, and bring word back to me. Just like, like I just said, Jesus was sent to his brothers, the Jews, and the welfare of the flock maybe representing the house of Israel, the lost sheep. So he sent, sent him from the valley of Hebron, and he came to Shechem. A man found him, and behold, he was wandering in the field. And the man asked him, What are you looking for? He said, I am looking for my brothers. Please tell me where they are pasturing the flock. 
Then the man said, They have moved from here, for I heard them say, Let us go to Dothan. So Joseph went after his brothers and found them at Dothan. When they saw him from a distance, and before he came, came close to them, they plotted against him to put him to death. Just like the Pharisees plotted against Jesus to put him to death. They said to one another, Here comes this dreamer. Now then, come and let us kill him and throw him into one of the pits. And we will say, A wild beast devoured him. Then let us see what will become of his dreams. It's like they planned to kill Jesus. And Jesus was put in the tomb. But Reuben heard this and rescued him out of their hands and said, Let us not take his life. Reuben further said to them, Shed no blood. Throw him into this pit that's in the wilderness. But do not lay hands on him, that he might rescue him out of their hands and restore him to their father. So it came about when Joseph reached his brothers that they stripped Joseph of, of his tunic, the very colored tunic that was on him, just like they stripped Jesus of his clothes. And they took him and threw him into the pit. Now the pit was empty without any water in it, just like Jesus was thrown into the tomb. Then they sat down to eat a meal. And as they raised their eyes and looked, behold, a caravan of Ishmaelites was coming from Gilead, with their camels bearing ar aromatic gum and balm and myrrh, on their way to bring them down to, to Egypt. The Ishmaelites, descendants of uh, Abraham's other son, Ishmael. Judah said to his brothers, What profit is it for us to kill our brother and cover up his blood? Come and let us sell him to the Ishmaelites, and not lay our hands on him, for he is our brother, our own flesh. And his brothers listened to him. Then some Midianite traders passed by, so they pulled him up and lifted Joseph out of the pit, and sold him to the Ishmaelites for twenty shekels of silver. Thus they brought Joseph into Egypt. Just like Jesus was taken into Egypt when he was a baby. Now Reuben returned to the pit, and behold, Joseph was not in the pit. Just like when they went to check, check on Jesus' tomb, he was not in the tomb. So he tore his garments. He returned to his brothers and said, The boy is not there. As for me, where am I to go? So they took Joseph's tunic and slaughtered a male goat and dipped the tunic in the blood. And they sent the very colored tunic and brought it to their father and said, We found this. Please examine it to see whether it is, it is your son's tunic or not. Just like after Jesus was raised, they tried to explain away his death, try to fake his death. Or his uh, resurrection, him being missing. Then he examined it and said, It is my son's tunic. A wild beast has devoured him. Joseph, Joseph has surely been torn to pieces. So Jacob tore his clothes and put sackcloth on his loins and mourned for his son many days. Then all his sons and his daughters arose to comfort him. But he refused to be comforted, and he said, Surely I will go down to Sheol in mourning for my son. Now, that's one of the few places in the Bible, in the English Bible, that Sheol is used. Most of the time, Sheol is trans, uh, translated into hell. There's two words that are translated into hell. Are there two separate things, Sheol and Gehenna? But, but they didn't want to make it look like Jacob was going to hell. So it's translated into Sheol. 
But basically after someone dies, she owes the resting place for the dead. The good and the bad separated. Gehenna is the lake of fire. The good are going to be resurrected to life. The righteous and the believers in Jesus are going to be resurrected unto life. The others are going to be resurrected as well, but just for judgment and to be sent into the lake of fire, Gehenna. So his father wept for him. Meanwhile, the Midianites sold him in Egypt to Potiphar, Pharaoh's officer, the captain of the bodyguard. That's the end of Genesis 37. God bless you guys.